Hey folks, thanks for tuning in again. We are back with another Xer video, and today is all about the G5 series. Uh, before we get into this though, a big thank you to all my subscribers. I think at this point, at the time of recording, I have 60 or 62, and I just want to say it means a lot. Hopefully there will be a lot more of you that enjoy my content enough to uh, like and subscribe, because at the end of the day, if I'm just doing this for myself, I might as well not record it. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, about the Xserve G5. First announced in 2004, it replaced the Xserve G4, obviously, which uh, I will do videos on as well. I'm kind of going out of order because I have more to say about the G5 at this point than I do about the G4, but we'll get to it, don't worry. Um, big deal at the time, as this was a 64-bit architecture, opposed to everything that came before, which was 32-bit. Uh, more powerful processors, the ability to hold up to 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, I think the G4 topped out at two gigabytes. Uh, SATA hard drives, they were just better and faster in every single way. But there was a downside. If you look here in the front, because of the more powerful processors, they had to sacrifice one of the hard drive bays to put these rather large air intakes on, just like the Intel. The G5 is where it started. A big deal for a lot of people. Uh, four drives just gave you more flexibility when it came to uh, setting up RAID types and redundancy. But also because reliably the G5 only takes up to one terabyte hard drives. So you can put bigger drives in, but in my experience sooner or later they're going to throw weird corruption errors and yeah, it's, it's just not recommended to put hard drives bigger than one terabyte in these things. So these top out reliably at three terabytes, whereas the G4 could top out at four terabytes if you put one terabyte IDE drives in there. Starting off with a little tour of the front panel, it's not that much different from the 2009 X server I covered. You got your power, your chassis lock, your system identifier light, and instead of a USB on the later models, Intel, you got a Firewire 400 port in the front here. Ethernet activity lights, system activity lights, basically processor, and all the way over here you've got your optical drive. This one has a uh, super drive in it, so it can read CDs and DVDs, but I think the very first models may have come with um, a combo drive, CD only. And then you have your three hard drive bays right there which, like I mentioned, can reliably hold up to one terabyte each. Um, you could put a three terabyte drive in there. I think it'll only show 2.2 terabytes. And sooner or later it's gonna mess up. So it's, it's better to just stick with a one terabyte drive for this, uh, for this model. Moving on to the back. Over here we have a single power supply. So after the G4 series, they still didn't really learn their lesson. Only one power supply in there, so no redundancy when it comes to that. Two gigabit ethernet ports right here. System identifier light and switch. This is a, a button as well. Serial port, two Firewire 800 ports. Sorry for the camera focus here. Two USB ports. And if you wanted to, video out. Now on the inside, the layout might look a little familiar. If you mirror it on the Intel, the power supplies, both of them would be on this side. The board is further off to that side and the PCI cards are sitting on top of the board. On the G5, they had this whole space. One third of the G5 was reserved for PCI slots. These are PCI X. And by default, the G5X serve did not come with a graphics card. So what you can do is you take an uh, ATI Rage 128 from a G3 blue and white, and that will provide you video on the G5 models. 
you got your RAM right here. I think I only have 4 gigabytes installed, but it can take up to 16. You got your power supply. And these big heat sinks, well, under the covers at least, are your G5 processors. These are running at uh, 2 gigahertz each. So it was a pretty beefy model at the time. Over here we have your optical drive and front panel board. So not much to look at, nothing uh, different from what you've already seen in the Intels. But then again the Intels were pretty much shaped after the G5. We're going to take a quick tour of the system itself once we power it up. But first I would like to mention that the G5 Xserve is not as loud as people would imagine they are. So what I'm going to do is take off my microphone, put it right in front of the Xserve about here and fire it up so you can see exactly or hear exactly what it sounds like. Here we go. Not too bad, right? And once it fires up uh, and loads the operating system, it immediately quiets down. Now I can tell you that the Intel, even when idle, is a lot louder than the G5. If we take a look at the server monitor, and let me see if I can zoom in on that. These are your fans. You got three fans for each uh, CPU, and that's an intake fan only. So the intake fans handle um, both intake and exhaust unlike the Intels that have a separate row of uh, fans for intake and exhaust. And then you have a PCI slot fan and a controller fan. That is it. They idle at around 4000 RPM. So what you were hearing before, or might be hearing now, is an idle state. There it is. Let's see if that's visible. Yeah, you can see that. Now, the graph will show you 2500 is the minimum. I've never seen them dip below 4000. So maybe that's just the one I have. Or, uh, I don't know. I can't explain that. But 4000 is, is about average. This is a base model. Let me zoom in on that. There we go. Dual 2 gigahertz with 4 gigs of RAM. Now the reason I didn't max this out is because I will only need this for number crunching. The amount of uh, memory, the size of the hard drives doesn't matter at all for me. Unlike with the Intel that I really wanted to max out 
with as much memory and hard drive space as I could because they will be handling very different tasks and again I will circle back to that later on and it's running Tiger by the way 10 for 11 uh, I've had nothing but trouble with uh, what's it called again with Leopard 10.5 I hate it with a passion so any power PC that can run 10.4 Tiger I will install 10.4 Tiger Shut this down. Nice and quiet. Unlike the Intels, when this is plugged in, the power supply doesn't run. It will only run once you hit the power button. So when they're off, they're very nice and quiet. Okay, now this is the fun part, and this is the reason I started this video. On top of the G5X serve, we have the G5X serve cluster node. This was introduced at the same time as the G5X serve, and it served one purpose. This one is strictly built to be a number cruncher. No uh, additional hard drive base, just a, just a bay for the single hard drive for the operating system. There's no optical drive and no graphics card. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same. Same button, same ports, just no optical drive. And if we take it around to the back, same setup, same ports, same everything, and no graphics card. So what I did is take the graphics card out of the G5. There's the ATI Rage 128. I'm gonna put that in here and give you a little tour. And there it is. Same layout as the G5 I showed you earlier. Dual processor. Fan array is in there by the way, in case I didn't point that out before. No optical drive. That's it. Just a hard drive, a bunch of processors and RAM. Now by doing this, they were able, and by they I mean Apple, they were able to offer the maximum amount of horsepower at a cheaper price. Because you didn't have the hard drives, the, the optical bay, all the stuff that is in a G, regular G5 Xserve is not in here. And as the name implies, cluster node, these were meant to be used in a cluster, so you would have multiple of these, and just crunch numbers. Storage won't matter. Maybe the memory matters, depending on your cluster task, but by far the most important would be processing power. Now, there are several ways to set this thing up. Uh, if you look at the manual for these things, Apple says, put the cluster node in target disk mode, hook it up, to uh, a Tower G5 or an Exerv G5 or a PowerBook, I think they even used as an example, and install the operating system on this hard drive through the other machine. I tried. I tried for days. I tried with several operating systems and it just always failed. Uh, another way to do it is in, install the operating system on another machine, just take that drive, put it in here. I tried that too, it failed. Granted, I, that was all with uh, Mac OS 10.5 Leopard, which is a nightmare to begin with. But I'm gonna take the unofficial route. I'm gonna take that ATI Rage 128, put it in the cluster node, and use an external hard drive to install the operating system on this. Um, when it comes to uh, fan noise, uh, fan behavior, it's identical to what you heard before from the regular Xserve G5. So I'm not going to put you through that again. So let me put the card in, put it back together, hook it all up, and I'll be right back. Okay, that did not go as planned. My external hard drive, right there, decided to die on me. As with pretty much everything that brand, uh, the power supply typically goes pretty quick. So, 
using this PowerBook G4 instead. Now what I will do is put the Xerf into target disk mode and install the system from here. Now I've tried this before with Leopard as I mentioned and it was a disaster so bear with me we're gonna try it again. Okay, the install just finished. I haven't fired up the XRV yet. So let's see if this worked better than when I tried it with uh, Leopard. What would happen with Leopard is it would power up just like now but the hard drive would never activate. I would never get a blue light saying that it was reading out something and I would never get anything on the screen. Hopefully using Tiger that is different. And it looks like I am in luck. All right, so that, that just proves it. Leopard is junk. If you have a power PC, just go with Tiger. You know, Intel, sure, give Leopard a shot, but on a power PC, just Use Tiger. Awesome, that worked. All right, let me go through uh, putting in the license key, doing a ton of updates, because it has a ton of updates, especially the Java ones. I think there's nine of them total. And then I'll get back to you. Okay, all the updates are finally done. So I can show you what's in this thing. Now it's basically the same as any other XRF G5, only with the most powerful CPU options were the only options. So you cannot get a cluster node in a single CPU model. It's always going to be a dual and one of the higher end ones. This is a dual 2.3, 4 gigs of RAM, running 10.4.11 Tiger. So this cluster node is ready to go. I have it set up with a unique um, computer name. So this is G5 cluster node one. Now you might wonder why do I even care about the cluster node? That's because I have a few of them. the plan is to get them all up and running and create an actual cluster and show you guys what that cluster was capable of back in the day or even today for that matter uh, I have no experience with cluster computing and whether it's Apple's X grid I think it was called X grid or a third-party solution so I'm, uh, I'm dying to find out how this works the problem is out of the whole stack of cluster nodes I got, only one of the power supplies works. So I have to fix all the other ones first. And here they are, all the power supplies that need fixing. I already started on the one up top. I finally got in all the capacitors I need to recap all of them. And once I get them up and running, I will have my cluster. So this was a little intro video to the Xserve G5 series. There's not much to it, really not much to tell about it. Uh, I will not be taking them apart because there's, there's really nothing to upgrade in there. Uh, 
if you have a single CPU model, maybe uh, you can plug in a second processor or maybe you have to do a board swap just like with the Intels, I don't know. But uh, I wanted to do this little intro and in the next video I will be covering the several ways in which you can ins install a cluster node Exerv. I had a um, a certain way in mind with the video card and the external firewire drive because target disk mode would, wouldn't work for me. It just refused to work and I, I tried that for a few days. Apparently with Tiger it does work. So I will be going over all the ways and depending on your scenario the best way to set up a cluster node Exerv for a quick deployment but if you only have one you might as well put in a video card and you know go old school just use a CD use a laptop as an optical drive or something like that so that's it for today uh, I'm also as you may have noticed doing a little experimentation with Final Cut Pro trying to up my skills a little to give you guys uh, slightly less boring videos so bear with me as I try to figure that software out there there's a lot to learn uh, I'm not gonna learn all of it but maybe just enough to make the videos a little more interesting uh, once again thank you for all the subscribers thank you for all my patrons and if any of you subscribers want to become patrons check out my patreon link any contribution would be very much appreciated see you guys next time take care <laughs>